Hello! I just wanted to do a more in-depth tutorial for some wildlife bird nests. There are a few patterns out there, uh, but the particular pattern that I am working with is one that the uh, that the Facebook groups for the Australian Rescue Relief have been sending out. So here is the smallest one completed. Um, the next size up has a nice tall setup so that they can actually fold the edges over into a sturdier nest. Um, and the rest of them increase in size but still with those nice tall sides. So there's the next one. And they just keep on getting bigger from there. To start off, I am going to show the first three rounds of the nest because that will get you to the smallest bird nest size that they recommend. So to start that you're going to do a magic ring or magic circle. Got to get just a little bit more yarn. Um, and for this project it's best to do two strands of worsted weight. Uh, because that actually gives it a lot more stability so that birds can perch on the side and it'll it'll hold things together rather than sagging down. So with two strands, I have one yellow and one orange, you basically just put it along as if you're still working with one. Just make sure that you have two. So you're going to wrap it around, put your hook in, take your string, and then you might just hold it like that. Take this tail, place it by the thumb, hold it there. You're going to chain up one. Now I like to move my thumb around. The, the tail is still going along in the same spot it was. I just move my thumb so that I can work on it easier. So for the first round, we're doing six single crochets. Two, three, four, five, six. So there's the six. I find that counting back from your hook works best for finding where the first stitch was. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Now, if you are someone who gets interrupted in your crocheting a lot, you might find it easier at each of the ends of the rounds to slip stitch and then chain up. So basically you would pull your yarn through here and then chain up one and then do the next round and do that for each round. However, the pattern suggests working in a spiral. It gives a nice look to it, but as I said, if you're somebody who gets interrupted often, it is kind of nice to have that jog in the appearance so that you can tell where your beginning of the round was. So. Basically, you're going to work straight into this. I'm going to demonstrate it using the spiral technique rather than slip stitch. So we're in that, that first stitch of the first round. And just carry this tail along with it so that it gets worked into the work rather than having to tuck it in later. So for the second round, which we're starting, you need two in each. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 11, 12. So that is the end of the second round. And you see how this center of it is just got a little gap there. What you can do is this tail can be pulled just a little bit more to help cinch that down further. So just keep on carrying that along. Now we're going to do round three. 
Let me just keep on going. Uh, you can actually place a marker here if that makes it easier for you to keep track of where the beginning of each round is. One, two, three, four, and we're putting five and six in the same. Seven, and then eight and nine will be in the same stitch. Ten, eleven, and twelve. Thirteen, fourteen, fifteen. 16, 17, 18. All right, so that is your third round. We got to this point by doing six in our magic circle. Then we did two in each for the second round. And then for the third round, we were alternating one and then an increase and then one by itself and then another increase. And that gave us 18. The rest of the pattern goes on with a similar setup if you just follow along with the instructions, uh, you should be able to get to whichever dimension you would like. Now the way that you get your different sizes is basically deciding which round you're going to stop the base on. If you want to do the smallest, you'd stop the base here and then go straight into basically building the sides. If you want it more of a medium size, you might stop on like round six or seven and then continue into the sides. I actually have worked up a piece that is the size, the largest that they give. This is 12 rounds. You count along here, you can see one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. So this is this is how big 12 rounds would be. So I'm just gonna go ahead and show how to start the sides. So, and just uh, a little bit of information, part of the reason why I worked this up ahead of time is because this took about a half hour to do. So it's, it's kind of a lengthy progress, um, but it, it gives a much bigger nest, which can house much bigger animals or much larger families of animals. So now the instructions for this pattern say that when you're about to start the sides to just do a quick slip stitch to help minimize that jog there. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna work into the back loops. So we're gonna, I'm not sure if you can see it very well there, but typically you'd be going in the whole stitch like that. So there's a V here as a stitch. Instead of going through both, this time we're actually just gonna go through this back one. That is what it means when it says to go in back loops only. So, See there how we're just going into that back piece. So you're going to take your stitch and you're just going to put a single crochet in the back of each of these loops. And you're going to carry on like that all the way around until you come back around to where you did that slip stitch. And what you're going to do when you get here is you're just gonna go into the entire stitch again, how you typically would. The back loop stitch is only to get that first row of the side to go vertical rather than being a floppy coaster. So basically work all the way around, get to here, you'll have this nice little ridge to show you where that was. And then when you get to here, after doing this stitch, you're gonna go into the entire stitch starting here and just keep spiraling up from there. Once you're done with that, you're pretty much done. It's for a for a full size nest, the largest one, you will likely be doing about 20 to 21 rows as the side height for that particular nest is supposed to be just under six inches. I think they have it as five and three quarters. So once you're done with that, you do another slip stitch 
to minimize the jog and then it'll turn out something similar to this so you can you can see there's no jog up right here it just goes smooth so and that'll give you a fairly large basket for all of those wonderful animals.